OpenAI just got one step closer to AGI, the smartest kind of AI. Zoom launched a feature that creates deepfakes clones of you to see through boring meetings, so you don't have to. The Nobel Prize went to research on AI, but not to AI itself yet. Elon Musk showed off cars with no steering wheels and, believe it or not, robot triggers. And at Wimbledon, they replaced 300 judges with just one AI. It's the kind of news that makes you go, no way! But hey, that's the world we live in now! Welcome to a new episode of AI News. Tesla just dropped three new products – the Optimus robot, the cyber cap, and the robot van. People on social media noticed that all three kinda look like the cars and the robot Sonny from iRobot with Will Smith. And just a reminder, in that movie, the robots turned against humans. The cyber cab is fully self-driving Tesla with no steering wheels or pedals. It looks cool, but it's kinda scary. Musk said they will start mass production in 2026. The catch? It's illegal everywhere right now. Laws say there has to be a driver ready to take control at any time. Investors didn't like the news either. Tesla's stock dropped almost 10% after the event. Next up, the Cyberman. It's an Art Deco-style minibus that can carry up to 20 people. But to be honest, I don't really get who is gonna buy it or what it's for. And finally, the Optimus Androids. This time, they walked around and chatted with the audience. There are already tons of videos online of people talking to them and even playing rock, paper, scissors. The guests were impressed, but here is the catch. These robots are no smarter than Amazon Go. They were actually being controlled remotely by human operators. Basically, just metal puppets. But hey, they definitely pulled off that wow factor. The folks at OpenAI quietly dropped their new project, Swarm. It's an experimental tool for everyone curious about how AI agents can work together as a team to solve complex tasks. These agents handle their own tasks and can pass stuff off to others, kinda like saying, hey bro, take this one for me. Swarm fits into the third level of OpenAI's five-step AI development model. Remember that one? It starts with simple chatbots and goes all the way to super systems that can run entire companies. Swarm sits right in the middle of that ladder. For now, Swarm isn't meant for serious projects, more like a sandbox to mess around with. But I think we will see multi-agent systems popping up soon, and Swarm is a great way to start understanding how they work. Who knows, your next manager might not be a person, but a whole team of AI agents coordinating with each other and assigning you tasks faster than ever before. Oh, by the way, you've got an incoming Zoom call from an AI. This news is wild. Zoom is launching realistic avatars that mimic your appearance and voice, basically deepfakes. The feature will roll out early next year. These avatars won't be able to have full conversation, but will read pre-written text like project report you have prepared. It's getting harder and harder to tell what's real and what's not. At least you can trust me. And me. And me too. Biggest news of the year. The Nobel Prize in Physics went to artificial intelligence. Yep, not black holes or quantum stuff, but neural networks. The winners were John Hopfield and the godfather of AI, Jeffrey Hinton. They used tools from physics to develop methods that became the foundation of today's powerful machine learning. Hopfield figured out how to teach computers to store and recall information kind of like the human brain. Then Hinton took it further, making it possible for machines to learn on their own. Now we have AI that recognizes faces, drives autonomous cars, and even inflates cats. By the way, two of Hinton's students, Ilya Sutskever and Alex Krzyzewski, built AlexNet. That's the neural network that kicked off the whole AI race by showing how neural networks could be scaled using GPU training. And here is a fun fact. Jeffrey Hinton, the godfather of AI, is also the great-great-grandson of George Bull. 
the guy who invented Boolean algebra. So it's kind of ironic, Bool gave millions of programmers jobs and now his great-great-grandson is building tech that could take those jobs away. But that's not all the Nobel Prize news. AI didn't just win in physics, it also picked up a prize in chemistry. Whoa! This time, half the award went to David Baker for computational protein design. And the other half was shared by two DeepMind researchers, Demis Hassabis and John Jumper, for protein structure prediction. David Baker created a program called Rosetta that can design proteins from scratch. For example, they already using it to develop enzymes that break down plastic so it could help to reduce plastic waste. Meanwhile, the guys from Google DeepMind took it to the next level with AlphaFold. Their program can predict the shape of proteins with 90% accuracy. To put that into perspective, this process used to take months and even years. But why does it matter? Proteins are the workhorses of our bodies. Knowing their structure makes it easier to develop treatments for disease like Parkinson and cancer. In a way, these scientists created a powerful tool that could save millions of lives. While AI and scientists are still playing on the same team, in sports it's already starting to take jobs. Starting next year, Wimbledon, the oldest tennis tournament in the world, will replace human judges with artificial intelligence. Just imagine, instead of 300 live judges, the matches will now be monitored by 12 cameras. A system called Hawkeye Live will take over the job of calling outs and service faults. It uses 12 cameras and microphones to track every shot in real time. As soon as the ball crosses the line, the system instantly determines whether it is in or out and announces the decision over the speakers. Where do you think ChatGPT is used the most? The US? Silicon Valley? <laughs> no. India takes the top spot. Around half of the population actively uses ChatGPT. That's not too surprising since India is a major hub for the IT industry and tools like this help the both work and education. Here is an interesting point. In Asia, AI is mostly used for practical purposes like research, or as virtual assistants. Meanwhile, in the United States and Germany, people tend to use it more for fun and experimentation, asking weird questions or testing the AI capabilities. And you know what is also interesting? In developed countries like Australia, France and the UK, more people are worried about AI impacts on society. But in Asian countries like China or Indonesia, people are more excited about it. So how do you use ChatGPT? For work, study or just for fun? 49% of entrepreneurs in the US say they are already using ChatGPT, while 30% are planning to try it soon. One way businesses can use ChatGPT is with Zapier for automation. For example, you can personalize email campaigns not just by customer type, but also by their behavior. Let's say your CRM shows that a customer bought a smartphone and then ChatGPT can automatically generate an email recommending accessories tailored to that phone. And the best part, you can set this up in Zapier with just a few clicks. To keep the AI magic going, OpenAI will need huge investments. The company has shared its plans for five years and they're pretty ambitious. By 2029, OpenAI expects to make $100 billion a year, compared to around $4 billion today, mostly thanks to ChatGPT and later products like video generation, search tools and other software. That's more than what Nvidia, Tesla or Tencent make today. And right now, the biggest cost is training and running AI models. Meanwhile, Y Combinator recently hosted another demo day. Guess how many of the latest startups are focused on AI? 75%. <laughs> wow! Just two years ago, only 15% were related to AI. These new startups are applying AI to specific areas like construction, furniture companies or healthcare providers. Sectors that used to dominate like fintech, healthcare and Web3 were much quieter this time or even missing altogether. One of the AI features Apple has rolled out is notification summaries. 
It's super convenient when co-workers send long messages and you are too tired to read them all. But here's the downside. If you get dumped, you will find out just as briefly. It feels like in those situations every word matter and it might be better to show a full notification that says this is about your relationship. Next year, the Black Eyed Peas are introducing a new member at their show in Las Vegas. Vida, an AI vocalist. She is not just a hologram. Widow will be able to interact with both the audience and the musicians in real time, performing alongside Will I Am and the rest of the group. That's all for today. See you next week.